Hi, I'm Madison and I'm going to talk to you today about beer. I just read an article this week from the LA Times of all places. It was about the four words that you should know if you want to sound like you know craft beer. Goose, cask, mosaic, and dry hopped. Okay, those are kind of some advanced words. I can talk all day about dry hopping my goose with mosaic hops and then putting it in a cask. But if you ask me to tell you the difference between an ale and a lager, I can't do it. Not so good. I thought that I would make a little series about the basics of beer. I learn better visually, and I thought maybe you guys do too. Number one, what is beer? Beer is three things. No, there's four in here, but three main things. Water, a starch source, yeast. Very rarely would you not have some hops. There are hundreds and hundreds of styles of beer. So how do we create all these different styles of beer? We have a few places where we can make some decisions. First of all, water source. Not all water tastes the same. I'm sure you've noticed. Secondly, grains. Barley, rye, and wheat. If you're gluten-free, then maybe it would be sorghum. Not only do you get to choose the type of grain, and there are several varieties of each, but the biggest thing that distinguishes them is how they're roasted. So not just how long, but the temperatures. And you can do things from creating more flavors of toffee with a lighter roast, or you can roast things longer, darker, and create the, the chocolates and the coffees and all those aromas. There are lots of different types of yeasts. And I'm gonna do a whole video just on ales versus lagers. I'll just go ahead and give it away. The big difference in ales and lagers is the type of yeast that's used. And different yeast can create completely different flavors in beers. Hops, and you have so many choices for hops. They're basically, they're a plant in the ground. Think of it kind of like a grapevine. They grow a little differently. They smell different. Think of them like smelling a different flower. You can smell a lily versus a pansy versus a daisy, honeysuckle. It's all going to smell different and hops are going to do the same thing. So the first thing you want to do is choose your grain and you're going to soak it in water and let it germinate. After this has gone on for a little while, then you're going to drain it and you're going to roast it. Think of it like toasting a piece of toast. You could have a light toast or you could have a burned black broiled toast and they're going to taste different, they're going to smell different, they're going to look different. After roasting, then you're gonna mill the grain to break it open, to break open the sugar so they're more easily accessible by the yeast. And then you're gonna throw it back into hot water again. Hops can be added all through the process. So they do a couple things. They cause bitterness and they also give aroma. So if you add hops towards the beginning of the brewing process, you're gonna get the bitterness. If you do it towards the end, which can be dry hopping, then you're going to get more of the aroma, the florals, the citrus. So with an IPA or a pale ale, which you might be familiar with, we think of those as hoppy beers. And normally they have the bitterness and they have all the, the floral aroma. So you have to guess that hops were added multiple times through the brewing process. And then you have a bunch of yeast swimming around in the sugar water. Well, what's it gonna do? It's gonna eat the sugars from that malt. Mount, not, not. Mount, not, mount. It's gonna poop out two things, alcohol and carbon dioxide, beer. So that is really the most simple explanation of how that works. So yeah, look forward to the next video.